This is just the same, except we do it an extra time. So if I have five plus y times x plus two. Well, first you do the five, and then you do the y. So I get five x plus 10, and then I do the y parts plus yx plus, that's a number two, yeah, two y. So that's all that FOIL is. For those who don't remember it, technically FOIL stands for you multiply the first ones together, then you multiply the outer ones together, then inner, then the last ones. So F O I L. We're going to do the same thing here. I got that one half M out here. Don't worry, this is leading someplace. So okay, multiply the first ones together. So I have VF minus VI. Sorry, times VI. It's still a dot product. Then the last ones plus VF dot VF minus, multiply the inner ones, VI dot VI, and then last minus VI dot VF. We are near the end. Again, I'm not going through this so that you can regurgitate it later. I'm going through this just so that you see this stuff comes from somewhere. All right, first let's take care of the simple, potentially simple ones here. Uh, green kind of shows up. Let's go bigger. All right, I have a vector dot product with itself. What is that going to be? Square. Square? Yes. So, let's get rid of stuff here. Uh, got my f dot force times displacement and I got one half mass times well, I got a vf squared uh, with a vi dot vi squared minus vi squared uh, what about I have vf dot vi there so multiplying those two and I have a vi minus vi times vf they cancel out, so that's what I'm left with. Really close to the end here. Now I'm going to distribute. I'm going to take this one half, multiply times this, and then times that. So I have one half mvf squared minus one half mvi squared. Yeah, you've seen it right here. It's that amazing. Questions up to here before we deliver the final blow to make you go, wow, wow. Would you do it externally or not? It's up to you. Any questions? All right. So looking at this, under what situations will this be equal to zero? Can you point to an object where this is zero? All right, what does M represent? All right, what does VF represent? Not velocity, the vector symbol's gone. There we go. It's the final speed. So if I'm multiplying, I got one half times the mass times the speed squared. When is that gonna, if I'm multiplying three things together, when is it equal to zero? Same thing. So two times two is zero? Oh no. No. Uh, I'm, 
multiply to recognize it wasn't zero. Yeah. What do you have to multiply in order to get a multi product of zero? Zero. Yeah. So when is this going to be equal to zero? So let's talk physically. When what's zero? Let's say it out loud. Not specifically. It's connecting to something later on, so that's why I'm not accepting when one of the variables is zero. What is that variable? So if the mass is zero, well, we're not dealing with a classical object anymore, but if the mass is zero, this would be zero. Or, yes. So whatever this is, this is classical physics, everything's got a mass. Later on, if you get into more advanced physics, you realize that not everything has a mass, but if it has a mass, it's, this whole thing is zero if the speed is zero. So whatever this is, it depends upon the speed. Now, let's take one step further. One half mv squared is too much to write. This is, of course, want to come up with a new thing because why express it in things we've already done when we can do something new? So for that said, they'll just use a capital K to be equal to one half mv squared. I'll explain why it's K in just a moment. So this now becomes whatever that final k value is minus that initial k value, which is just the change in this k thing. Of course, let's explain why k. It deals with, it is zero if it's not moving. It's not zero if it is moving. So this value depends upon movement. Go back to the Greek roots for movement. Kinetic or kinet. Kinematics, kinetics, uh, kinescope. All these things deal with moving. And so K is kinetic energy. Now, later on in life, you're working on your Nobel Prize winning work, and you need a formula for kinetic energy. It is the same formula as is written right here. Now, we talked about Newton's second law, that F equals ma, but if mass changes, we really have to use the F equals the change in momentum over change in time. But kinetic energy, that's the formula for kinetic energy regardless. So, that is the one formula that I do expect you to memorize. I expect you to know that. 30 years down the road, when my memory is even worse, I'm gonna run into you, we'll establish, oh, wait a second, I remember you. You were in my class. You should know the formula for kinetic energy, and I expect you to be able to tell me, 30 years from now, the formula for kinetic energy. Because it's the one formula that is still gonna hold true no matter what level you are in physics. So, which one did you want us to remember? If I say, what is the formula for kinetic energy, you're supposed to respond one half mv squared. Now, when I was doing IT work, we were all doing our, the boot camp, and these people came in in the middle while we were doing some programming, and they said, all right, everybody up, we're gonna do jumping jacks. And there were a number of us, including me, who just sort of looked at them strangely. And then the tone of voice changed, and then we are serious. Everybody up now. So, I am serious. You're not going to get up. We're not doing jumping jacks. But I'm going about to ask you, what is the formula for kinetic energy? And you will, in unison, I want to hear the chorus of angels. I want all of your voices to respond one half in V squared. Here we go. 
What's the formula for kinetic energy? One half mv squared. Thank you. If you did not speak that just then, next time. All right. A couple more definitions because everybody loves definitions, right? We started out with this right here. That is called work. And the symbol traditionally used for work is a capital W, which is why I don't use capital W for weight. So we have this work, and that's the total force. So this is the total work, total or net. The total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. I'm going to write that up. That's a, a key one. So let's see. Work total is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Now this next bit, I think, is a bad label for it. But this is known as the work energy theorem. Now, the reason I don't like calling it a theorem is because it is true because we define work and define kinetic energy to make it true. But it is still called the work energy theorem. So if I take this marker and I let go, Work is done to it because the gravitational pull is pulling it down. The gravitational pull pulled it down a certain, had gave it a certain displacement. Work was done and it, the kinetic energy changed. It went from zero to something. So what that theorem is saying is that the work done by the Earth on the marker is equal to the change in kinetic energy of the marker. Let's just do it. Quick and dirty problem here. I got a, it looks like a five kilogram mass. It is going to fall seven meters. Let's start it at rest. So the initial, the initial speed is zero meters per second. Let's figure out the work that was done. Well, first off, we need to figure out what are the forces acting on it. Force diagrams, they come back. Somewhere there's a different color marker. All right. While it's falling, what are the forces acting on it? <laughs> Anything else? All right, that's it. So the work done is the weight times how much it got displaced. What was the displacement? All right, let's make that, well, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative direction. So we have seven meters, about, I'll just write seven. So work, the total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. That is the total force times the displacement. So that's just the weight <coughs> times the seven meters. And that's going to be equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. It's about to come, I'm about to ask it again. Uh, how do you find weight? That's just mg times 7, which is 5 times 9.8 times 7. What if you multiply that out, what do you get? Three forty something. Three hundred forty. Three hundred forty-three. 
that's multiplying all three together. It's not Newton's. The five times 9.8, that's Newton's. But we're also multiplying it by, so in terms of units, that's Newton's. That's meters. So you could write Newton meters if you wanted. This, that's perfectly legitimate. But of course, physicists said, it's too much to write. Now surely we can come up with a single word. The scientist has worked on even something remotely related, related to this, and they came upon Joule. The person's name is with a capital J. The unit is with a lowercase j. The symbol, another one of those where you're going, how did they come up with this stuff? Uh, capital J. And that's the same as a, by definition, a Newton meter, which is the same as a kilogram times meter squared per second squared. So that's 343 joules. That is how much work was done on the object. Yes, 343 joules. Is that what, did I miss your question? No. Okay. Did you have a follow up question? No, I think I got you. you okay. I, I got you. Okay. You had to look up if you, there was more you wanted to ask, but we're right there. All right, so that's how you do the left hand side. Let's figure out the right hand side. Let's see if we can come up with that. What is the change in kinetic energy? What is the formula for kinetic energy? I was sort of done in rounds and some people trailed off there. Let's try that one again. What is the formula for kinetic energy? That was nice. I think the first time you did it, it was much nicer, but you know, we'll get it. So I got one half mv final squared minus one half mv initial squared. Well, since the initial speed is zero, what is the initial kinetic energy? Zero. Yeah. So, zero. And there's that inside one. So I just have to figure out what that final speed is. So this would be equal to one half times five times whatever that final speed is. Well, let's flash back to some of the stuff we did in chapter three. It's gonna fall seven meters. Well, I know that if I drop something, how fast it's going, if I drop something, it's just equal to acceleration due to gravity times time. I also know that the distance it's going to travel if I just drop it is one half gt squared. So I can use the second one to find time, and then plug into the first one to find speed. Well, the distance is seven, is one half times 9.8 times time squared. That's just 4.9. So I have seven is equal to 4.9 t squared. So my time squared is seven divided by 4.9. If someone would be kind enough to tell me what 7 divided by 4.9 is, 1 point something. And then 0.42, 1.42, 0.43. And therefore, that's time squared, and so time would be the square root of that, which is. So now I can plug into here. V is equal to 9.8 times that 1.19 seconds. And so what is the final speed? Eleven point six six two. 
1.662 units. Speed. I think you said meters per second. And so now we can plug into here. That's 11.662 squared. Let's see how close we get. I suspect there's some rounding problem, rounding differences in there, but we should get really close to 343. And if not, there's a mistake somewhere. So there are several places that we rounded off. Uh, that's rounded, that's rounded, that's rounded. Well, it's rounded because that's rounded. So that's, that is the, so if I wanted to figure out the final speed, I didn't have to go through all of this mess. I could have just set this up with a V there and just solve for V. 